we have a very different uh, layout right now because on the right side of the screen, you see the spreadsheet that we are going to operate from uh, as we name our 53-man roster going into the weekend. So in some ways, this is like a power rankings uh, that, that we're kind of working with here, Anthony. And I have based this off of, because there's currently names filled in. So we'll go through it. We'll try to get through the offense in the next 10, 12 minutes, and then we'll do the defense before we get to our pick six. But we are going to base this off of the one that we did on take command, although we're not, we're not at all uh, tied to this. So, if, if Anthony, you want to change uh, out any names, you disagree, like we're going we're gonna to work together here. Uh, I don't know who's Quinn and who's Peters, who's got the final say. But we're gonna we're gonna work together if this 53. And you'll also meant, notice if you're watching uh, slash currently if you're not watching because you're listening on the radio like most of you are. In our spreadsheet is the name Jahan Dotson. So we're gonna quickly get to receiver here and X that out because uh, he's not gonna make the Commanders 53. I know that's a bold take, but but uh, he's he's an eagle now. Okay. So with that, Anthony, are you ready to go? Any other questions set up necessary needed here, producer extraordinaire? Uh, I just need the. Sh did you share the? I did. Uh, I did share the sheet. Uh, it's in your. It's in your G chat. Oh, because we're a gotcha. Google, a Google-based company. Yep. All right. I'm there, and uh, we're all set. Excellent. Gotcha. Okay. So QB one, Jaden Daniels. QB two, Marcus Mariota. And really, the questions. I'm going to just go ahead and Jahan Dotson. Sh bloop. He's gone. Okay. The question would be: Do we want a third? Jeff Driscoll being the third here. I think so. I kind of think that might be the case. Getting the ability to get here, here's why we didn't do it. The ability to get third quarter or a veteran to practice squad now is really good. And I know the third quarterback rules are more complicated now. Like it kind of counts towards practice squad or something. But I think on like your base 53, just having to, you need the roster spot somewhere else. I'm going to say, I'm going to put Jeff Driscoll's name out to the side. Um, and I would also say, oh, wow, that changed that changed the whole color of the, the sheet. Sam Hartman, probably a practice squad name. But realistically, um, I think they probably, like, uh, like, I don't want to delete the dots in line and put Driscoll in because I still think you can get Jeff Driscoll to practice squad the way that quarterbacking, or the, the way that... Uh, He's played so far the way that teams look at quarterbacks. But I will say there is a chance that that changes on Sunday. I think he's one of the guys that we need to kind of watch out for to, to ball out on Sunday. And he could force his way that if they legitimately want to keep him, that he, he is a name that if he balls out, other teams might inquire as their, their number two backup. And then if you want to keep him here, you're going to have to name him to your 53 and pay him a, a full, whole, you know, player salary. My question to you would be, and we haven't seen a ton of Marcus Mariota during the preseason. And he probably won't play Sunday either. But do you think he's outplayed or has he looked better than Marcus based off like what we've seen in camp and what we've seen in the I think it's a fair question. Um, to which the answer is yes, in my personal opinion. But I don't think that means that he's going to pass Marcus on the depth chart. Oh, no, I'm not saying he'll pass him. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sort of kind of why I'm more so leaning to him being on the roster just because, I don't know, I, I think it's a safer bet kind of thing. Yeah, I, I just – I don't think him being basically right there with Marcus changes – like. It's about the roster spot. It's not about the evaluation of the player, which kind of sucks if you're Jeff Driscoll and you've done a really nice job. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. I, I think that's a name to watch for Sunday. Okay. Uh, the running back position. When Logan and I did this, we had Austin Eckler, Brian Robinson Jr., and Jeremy McNichols as RB3. Michael Wiley has been awesome, by the way. Uh, shout out to our guy C-Dub, who tweeted me earlier when we were talking about Mr. August uh, names, Anthony. Uh, Michael Wiley has been a, a, not a guy that you could certainly put in there. Um, but I, I just think that McNichols has consistently been their third guy. Like, every single week, he's been RB3. How many times in a row you got to be RB3 before we go, hey, hey, uh, that, guy's, that guy's RB3. Um, so I, I think that he's probably the guy, but this is, again, a spot 
that on Sunday, if Wiley comes out and kills it, I think he wins the job. So th- this is, as of right now, I don't know that I would change this, but if you make a really strong case here, I'll, I will change the sheet. Uh, no, I, I like Jeremy McNichols as three, and I think you said it correctly. He Wiley has to go out there and, you know, win the job, steal the job. I think if they're, you know, neck and neck, uh, 1A, 1B kind of thing, or 3A, 3B, I think you probably lean towards Wiley, but again, he has to go out there and prove it. Yeah, I think he's safely played his way in a practice squad. Um, you know, and again, if, if you're going to pull a Dan Quinn and look at this as a 70 player roster, like Wiley's certainly on it. But for a 53, the veteran McNichols. But this is the, the other thing that I wonder is like, what do they think of him on special teams? And if they really like him, do they keep four running backs? And again, like, Keeping just five receivers feels too thin. Way too thin. But is it? If you have four, three or four others on practice squad, and at that point you're trying to say, like, who is going to be our starters on teams every week, and could you keep four running backs and only keep five receivers? And this is also where Chris Rodriguez being out of the loop also hurts because he was a special teamer last year. Um, right. I don't know if that's interesting. Maybe we see some of these guys, though, on, on special teams. Maybe they, right. they put Wiley out there to see what he offers. I think this is going to be, so, uh, you know, yeah. we talked earlier about, you know, do you know by halftime? I think for wide receiver positions or, you know, running back position, like in terms of who makes the squad based off of their offensive or defensive prowess, we're going to know by halftime. Special teams might be a full four quarters type of deal. Yeah. Let's leave Wiley on the side for now, but let's let's keep rolling. Okay. Zach Ertz, Ben Sinnott, John Bates, and we put Cole Turner on. How do you feel about that, Anthony, uh, based off of where we are now? Sinnott has come on strong. I'm not going to lie. He was always making the team, though. Yeah. I know he was always making the team, but it's the fact, the impact plays that he's actually making. Um, Haven't seen a lot from Cole. I I think this is a big game. Um, He's one of the guys I'm I'm looking at, you know, teasing my pick six uh but here, I, I think i think i, I will leave him, on here. I, I, will leave him on here. I would too and i actually feel str- like the the whole impetus of doing this is like how does the dots in trade change things and to me this actually strengthens this as a as a take that i currently have as, as a position that i currently hold because they want to be in multiple tight end sets i think quite a bit and having extra options to do that seems like a really important thing, especially if you don't want to overload Zach Ertz so that you have Zach Ertz healthy and fresh the entire season because you're, you know, for as much as we can say they're in year one of a rebuild, like, they're not planning that way. The coaches, and the coaches shouldn't be, to be clear. They should be planning on how are we competitive, how are we at our best in November, December, and hopefully January. And so I think that Cole Turner gives them another option. Now... He has played with his hair on fire, but he also had a ball that got picked off that went through his hands in the fourth quarter against Miami. So I think Turner's roster spot is still on the line. But as of right now, I think in camp, in practice, he's done enough and played the right way. And for what they want, he's also played on teams, by the way, that that this is how I would still, not only how I would still have it, but I feel stronger about it now than I did before the Dotson trade. Which brings us to receiver. So we have McLaurin, Zacchaeus, Brown, McCaffrey, and then we put Jamison Crowder in because we didn't really think that any of the younger guys had done enough to beat Crowder out, especially because the one guy that I think Logan and I both were higher on is Bryson Tremaine, and uh, it doesn't particularly seem like the coaching staff is quite as high on Bryson Tremaine based off everything that they've said publicly and some of the rumblings you hear when everyone on the beat is seemingly saying the same thing, which is that he's not fast enough and that seems to be coming from somewhere. So, six spots is what we had. There's currently a blank. What do we do? Yeah, I don't get the Bryson Tremaine discourse. Like, why? Why? He's a unique body type who plays teams. He plays like his hair's on fire. He's made plays. I understand he doesn't. His 40 time's not great, but he plays faster than his 40 time. I don't get it either. 
But I'm also not going to make a projection to something that uh, I think isn't going to happen. Yeah. Now, if Bryson goes out and scores two touchdowns on Sunday, then maybe he forces his way on. But I think right now, like, I throw my hands up. Let's, let's come back to it for a second because let me, let me also just scroll down here because we had them keeping one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine offensive linemen. Some teams do keep ten. So is there another position or – do we just go one short on offense and make our lives easier once we get to the defensive side? Uh, I think I, I think we're we're gonna end up with six receivers though. I think so too. I the think, question is who? I mean, so you got Byron Pringle. That's a great call, actually. Like, he would be my leader in the clubhouse. After that, for some reason, I think. Even though he hasn't made the plays and he fumbled against Miami, Casimir Allen. Cliff was talking about him yesterday. Well, yeah. Uh, they, I, it seems like they, they really want to find a place for him. Exactly. That, and the, by the way, that place is running back. He's not a receiver anymore. They've, they've converted him to running back. Now, does that mean that he could split out? Absolutely. Like, it's not like, ah, sorry, you're a running back now. You're not allowed to play. You're not allowed to split out because we know that, like, Austin Eckler will line up outside and, you know, Gibson's done that this team in the past, et cetera, et cetera. But, yeah, like, that's a – Anthony, think... you want to know what? Well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go delete row. <laughs> and then we're going to come up here and we're going to go insert row. And we're going to go RB, and we're going to go Kaz Allen. Okay. Now, he has got to make a play, and at the very least, hold on to the freaking football. Not blow an assignment. Be useful on Sunday. But they seem to really want him on the team, mm -hmm. and I think they could definitely, based off what he's done, get him to practice squad. There's no doubt, because who wants the guy who's fumbled and has been unreliable? Oh, we're going to assign him. Like, no. They're going to put him on practice squad and hope to continue to develop him. But maybe they don't. Maybe they go ahead and start him. I think Pringle's a great call as well. Um, he could definitely wind up making this team. They brought him back. He's, he's got kick return experience. He's got team's experience. You know he's going to play hard. Um, he made big catches for this team, frankly, last year. There weren't a lot to be made, but he made some of them. Yep. Um, so there's that. Okay, then quickly, Anthony, offensive line. Wiley, Cosme, Biotish, Allegretti, Coleman, Lucas. We put Chris Paul in because we think he's had the best camp of these backup guys, Trent Scott, and then Michael Dieter is a veteran. Is there any other offensive linemen that you would exchange there? No, nah, I think those are the nine we keep. I think that there is a great chance that someone else can make, you know, plays well and, and we wind up getting some kind of surprise because Dieter hasn't had a great camp. Scott hasn't had a great camp. Um, I think Chris Paul has played his way into this because yeah, he's, he's done, yeah, he's done a good job, like a decent enough job at tackle uh, and obviously at guard. So again, not not world grader uh, or you know a road grader, world whatever I'm trying to say. You, people know he hadn't been amazing, but he's been good enough. He's been better than these other guys. So Chris Paul makes the team as well. Okay, we just did the offense. Let's get to the defense, uh, and let's do that. Anthony starting on the D line. Uh, John Allen, Deron Payne, Dorrance Armstrong, Cleveland Furl, Dante Fowler, Johnny Newton. Those guys are the locks. Here are the guys that I think are in a, some kind of battle um, for a spot. you got on the outside, Jamin Davis, Javante Jean-Baptiste, uh, Andre Jones Jr. On the inside, you've got Fedarian Mathis, John Ridgeway. I think Benning Patoe has had a really nice camp. Um, Norell Pollard's had a nice camp. But I think it really does come down to Ridgeway and Mathis. And then K.J. Henry is the other name I should mention as well. Um, any of those guys that I mentioned that you feel like are locks? Uh, I think Jamin. I think Jamin will end up making the team and K.J. When it comes to Phil Mathis and Ridgeway, I, I want to lean more towards Ridgeway, to be honest. I don't think Phil Mathis makes the team. Interesting. Is, yeah, I, I don't. I don't think he. Just because, again, I haven't seen him make really any impact plays. He doesn't really offer too much from a pass rush standpoint. I um, mean, he's supposed to be a run stuffer, and you know, 
He hasn't really done yeah. much today. Yeah, so I think if it comes down to those two, um, then, then Mathis makes the team. However, um, I think there's room for both the way that we did this. I think the real question is how many inside, how many outside. So in our like grouping that we did on Take Command, we had Mathis Ridgeway as the backups inside along with obviously Newton. And we had Henry and Davis outside. So in some ways it comes down to do you want a Javante John Baptiste over Fidarian Ma- or sorry, over John Ridgeway? Or do you feel like you need that extra beef inside? And I think part of this is going to come down, frankly, Anthony, to the health of Johnny Newton. Like, you obviously need to get him on the 53 initially. Um, and then if you want to IR him, you can. But it then becomes like the practice squad game. And this is why this is all so silly, is you have to try to figure out, like, okay, is this guy injured? And is this guy going to be need to make the 53, then go to IR? And this guy that gets cut is actually making the team or who do they want to get through the practice squad and they're going to wind up calling that guy up for weeks one and two because Newton's not ready to go or whatever. Like, so in some ways this is all uh, a semantics exercise because I think all of these guys wind up being around so long as they don't get cut and claimed by another team. But I think when you talk about the, the likelihoods here, Javante John Baptiste was a seventh round pick. You can probably, unless he has an awesome day on Sunday, you can probably get him through the practice squad Ridgeway has a lot more experience, fifth-round pick, has had some nice games in the league, and maybe you are a little more scared of losing him, and so, you know, maybe you keep Ridgeway. But I, if you were like, no, I think you keep Ridge, you try to get Ridgeway through the practice squad, and if you lose him, you lose him. I'm not losing Javante John Baptiste. Then I have no problem on our list here switching those guys out. Nah, that's a good point. I forgot all about Johnny Newton. It's a new injury he's uh, nursing in his foot, so... I could I I can see both of those guys making the team. Yeah, I I definitely could too. Um, and that's so let's keep it what we got. So that's what we did on Take Command earlier in the week. Uh, but this is one that I'm glad we highlight because I think that it's gonna be like I think this gets decided on Sunday. If Andre Jones Jr. has three sacks, then like that could that could change the equation. If Narell Pollard, you know, interior guy, has a, a really nice game and gets some pressure, like that could change the game here. So I think that's one of the ones that's not decided. Um, one of the interesting ones too, linebacker. So Wagner Luvu, obviously. I think Michael Walker is a lock. Uh, 32. He he's played a ton. Um, he's the guy. Uh, that is played while Wagner has been not playing in the preseason. And then you've got Jordan McGee as a uh, Jordan McGee as a rookie, but a guy who's dealing with the MCL sprain. So again, I think that he should make the 53, but then does he wind up on IR because how long is he going to be out? And then you've got behind that Dominique Campton, who they're now counting as a linebacker as well. Yeah, I was curious about the Jordan McGee just because again he is nursing the MCL is there not a way for do we have to necessarily put him on the 53 no you don't speak, want him no, to be claimed you, you've got to put him on the 53 to have him not be claimed and then you can put him on IR if he's going to be out for a couple of weeks mm. so I think I think this is actually like it was hard before we knew Hampton was a linebacker now Yeah. and now all of a sudden it's like oh wait, he's a linebacker, that makes the numbers work. And that also makes them work at the DB spot where you've got Emmanuel Forbes, Benjamin St. Juice, Mike Sainer still, Noah Igbenogane, uh, Chigozi Anusium is the last guy we put on. We should talk about him in a second. Uh, Quan, Chin, Butler, Tyler Owens for sure is making it. Yes, Reeves, sir. Forrest. And it really comes down to me to Anusium, Forrest, and then uh, who was I saying? Oh, Tariq Castro-Fields. Like, those are the guys that are um, kind of in the mix for that last DB, special, mostly special teamer spot. And Anusium's made enough plays as a UDFA that they brought in and paid a pretty decent chunk of change that I think he might have a leg up here uh, on some of these other guys. Yeah, I think Tariq Castro feels, though, I think he's been a little bit more consistent. Um also, I think he has a little bit more experience, so I think I would lean him before I went with Chagosi. Um, All right, so, yeah. so in our Hoffman show one, this is the one 
change we're going to make to be different from Take Command? Because that's really what we're trying to do here is uh, make sure the content is different, Anthony. That's our jobs. Uh, Tariq Castro Fields over at Chagosi Newsium. We're going to talk about this more next, though, because we're going to do our pick six. And, you know, we've obviously, in doing this exercise, talked about, and by the way, Tressway, Tyler Ott, kicker to be named later. Maybe it's Cade York, maybe not. Uh, but th that rounds out the 53 to make everything official. This is the Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.